From Nashville, Tennessee, Inside the Noise Podcast with your host, Jenna Heidman. Here's Jenna. All right, we are back at 3rd and Lindsley with Josh Ward before his show tonight. <laughs> How are you good, doing? It's going to be a good one. I'm, I'm excited. Heck, this is, the crowd uh, already looks great. The crowd looks great. Still, this yeah. is, uh, what, a year later? Is, is it a year already? Almost a year, maybe? Almost a year. It's getting there. Um, it's crazy. Last time you were here, you were putting out Ain't It Baby yep. as a single, and it went number one in Texas. Yep. How does that feel? It's your 11th number one. That... That song right there was that uh, that that kind of crossover song yeah. for us, and you know it, when when you can, I, I try to write songs or pick songs for the record that if it talks about the gal falling in love or feeling good or telling a girl just how beautiful she is, those are the ones that I want to cut because yeah. the ones on the front row are the ones that are forty feet back. I can go, you know what? Every morning, you know you're. You're beautiful. I'm singing to my wife. You know, I'm singing to their girlfriends or whatever. But it's just one of those songs that that worked. I mean, um, crowd wise, and and it is. It's a fun song. It's an energetic song, um, which gets the crowd into it. But you know, for the most part, you know, you you write the songs that the gals like. You'll sell a little bit more tickets. <laughs> yeah. Did you write that one? I did not write that one. Uh, some friends of mine, uh, they they. We we got it off of a thumb drive, like oh it was God. sent to us. Uh, Brett Beavers, uh, one of those songs. Um, it just it was one that had to go on the record. Yeah. I mean, I've always been very prideful about picking everything that goes on my record, hand picking everything, and uh, that one just kind of spoke and said, "Hey, this is this is what they're wanting to hear." You know, I mean, I can I can sing you a heartbreak song. Um, and, and we're listening to it right now. Yeah. Jake Worthington's <laughs> on the stage. It's breaking my heart. But, uh, you know, I can write those sad songs. I can write those songs about drinking. But the the actual love songs, mm-hmm. like Ain't It Baby, I mean, that that's talking about a perfect night between a boy and a girl. And, you know, I, I didn't get to write it, but I've experienced it. Yeah. So, I can, so you can I can take that from it and give it out every yeah. night you know they they always say if you're gonna write one or record one be ready to sing it for the next 30 years of your life that's true so that's uh, true i try to pick songs <laughs> that i know that i can do that with but yeah it's a great song um had a you know the 11th number one with it which you know knock on wood and that's crazy it, 11 it in a, consecutive in a it row it is um it was our first song to ever release to to national radio to the big boy charts um did pretty good with it and uh, i believe we landed at 42 with it which um from an old boy from east texas ain't too bad yeah that's so, really good um we're just we're just happy to be here man i mean and getting to getting to do these songs reach out to these new markets um you told me 10 years ago i'd be doing this i said you was crazy <laughs> but we are so and now your next single it is a little on the sadder side now. We like, we flipped it totally around. It is. It, I mean, we we're, we're covering. And I'm a broad, sucker for like a sad song, oh, I so I too. love the sad ones. I am too. I mean, I, that's why I started playing music. I mean, I learned how to hurt at an early age. You know, uh, listening to Merle and Jones and Whitley and all those guys, and um, I just kind of got it. But this song right here, Roger Springer, Jason Hersey, and White and Cub, and some of my friends that are out in the room right now. Um, listening to Jake Worthington play <laughs> really good music right now. Um, they wrote this song and Wyatt sent it to me and he goes, here's some songs, just listen to. And this one hit me in the head like a hammer. Yeah. Like, I've been there. Mm-hmm. I've lived it. Um, I know that I can connect with people with this song. Yeah. I recorded this one out of personal use. Not not for uh, I wonder what I could do you know how is it going to reach out to this person I recorded this one for me yeah um, so it's really cool you're getting to put it out as a single it, it is and it's a gamble I mean um, sad songs and losses ain't selling this year so to record a sad song and put them out um, 
if it does well, it's a hell of an accomplishment for me. So, yeah. um, man, I've, I've made a living singing sad songs all my life. <laughs> and, uh, hell to, to get to do this one and put it out to the world and, and have the people respond to it. I mean, even before we released it as a single, you could tell showing, it was a showing up and the crowd's just going, yes, like, they, yeah. they just gravitate to it and getting the, getting the messages on social media. Like I connected with you tonight. First night I've ever seen you in Boise, Idaho. Yeah. I've never seen you before in my life. When you played that song, you spoke to me and I was like, well, well, this might be it. Yeah, this, this is the next this one. Is it. Guess what, guys? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's it's been exciting to do, um, and I think I think that I did it well because I, I get it, mm-hmm. I understand it, um, I know that heartache. Yeah. So you know, to to know that heartache and be able to relate yourself. You can, yourself in the story. you can tell the story and tell everybody, hey, he, here I am. Yes. I'm, I'm an open book right now. And it's sometimes, I mean, whenever I walk off that stage, I don't realize how vulnerable we are up there. Mm-hmm. But when you're, in the, when you're in the mix, in the moment, you, you just give it, you walk away going, oh, wow. Like, yeah. yeah. Did I step over the boundaries? Did I let them see too much of what? I don't know. I'm thinking yeah. about weird stuff like that. <laughs> but it's good to let them in that deep it too, because then you're it gonna is. have people connect on a deeper level. <laughs> um, We're all trying to be serious right now. And I got a camera in my face. It's been a year, almost a year. What has yep. gone on, like? Oh, shit. I know I saw, well, I didn't see you, but we were both in Las Vegas for the rodeo. Yep. That was my first time being in Las Vegas and my first rodeo mm-hmm. ever. It was the coolest and event. And you handled it very <laughs> well. It was the you coolest did. event I, I ever was went following to. following I was like, you got this girl. It was. You got it. How many more days do we have? Oh, yes, we're going to only went it. out like a few nights, so I paced myself well because I knew that I could definitely I went out not make night. it through. I went out I was there for night, 16 so. days. Woo. I don't know if you were oh, long. But your first time in Vegas for 16 days, you're not trying to go out every night. Well, you know, Vegas is one of those deals. In, in the world that I live in, you know, the whether it be music, whether it be cowboying, I, yeah. I fit both sides of that page. That's why it was so cool. And, uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've been to the NFRs before, but um, this time I got to experience it with my wife. She wanted to come out and... She said, I've been to Vegas before. And I said, babe, you have never been to Vegas during the finals. Yeah. It's, it's a totally different world. But, um, man, it was it was great. We went out. We seen some great folks. Met up with some great people. Seen some old friends I ain't seen in a while. Um, went out to just pee off. Go, yeah. go enjoy Vegas. Hit up some guys while we were there. You know, I mean, our sponsors and all that stuff. But um, just go... Just have some fun. Just go do it. I mean, I I worked while I was there, but I mean, people want to call that work. But um, yeah, um, about the first three days we were there, I I put boots on the ground and went to work. But then after that, it was just Lord have mercy. It was uh, it it wasn't hangover bad. You know, okay, good, it wasn't good. the movie Hangover back. <laughs> but <laughs> oh well, yeah, there, there were some nights that I wandered around trying to find my room. But um, Man. it was fun. I mean, knowing that you guys were out there, it, it's there's no telling who you're going to meet. Yeah, it you was know. cool. I went in knowing no one on the rodeo side, but knowing like Nashville and the music yep. side. But I met and learned so much about the rodeo and it's such a small world too. The it is like, very small. All those world. girls knew everyone. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You know everyone together? Like, oh, you guys yeah. all from different states. You know the same people. That's it. And you know, it, it and music and rodeo. Because mm-hmm. um, I come from a rodeo background. We run in the same crowds. It's a very, very small yeah. world when it comes to that. Um, I got off the road rodeoing. I went into oil field. Left oil field. Went into music, and it was like. I never unpacked a bag. I still, still I still <laughs> run in the same circles. Um, I'm an ambassador of the, the sport. Um, yeah. But I just get to support it on a different level. Now. Yeah. Um, but, man, it, it's so much fun. I mean, you're catching up with friends. You know, you're, you're going out there and for work. <laughs> and, it was uh, work. And... 
it's one big party. I mean, people that have never been to the NFR before. They have to go. They don't know. I mean, it's it's overwhelming. It's an overwhelming experience. But It was very uh, overwhelming. But, you know, you learn to get in where you fit in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you learn your uh, how much you can handle per yeah. night. Yep. Learn to pace yourself. <laughs> but uh, you can't go too hard. It's a it's a blast, man. I mean, just to just to catch up. That's that's what it's like for me. I mean, it going out there is a vacation. Yeah. Basically, you see old friends. I get to catch up. So, um, hopefully, a good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, we'll be back this year. And, yeah. Um, Looking to get in to start playing some shows this next year. The shows were so good while we were there. Yep. So good. Even like the nightly acts at Losers. Yep. Who are like more like my friends. Like they're coming up right now. Right. All the girls knew who those guys were and they were so excited right. to see them too. So it's cool to like introduce them to like the Nashville side of things. Yep. So every, um, we'd hit up Losers about <laughs> twice a night. Um, but we got to play our, uh, I'm sponsored by Rock and Roll Denim, Panhandle Western Wear, and they had one of their big parties over there. Okay. And, uh, William Clark Green was there. Yeah. Um, and we all got up and song swap. Like, oh, that's Will really would cool. play three or four, I'd get up and play three or four, and, you know, being the, the new kid on the block, <laughs> that I am, you're that I, you're right, I am, but, um... It was cool because I was accepted. Yeah. I was accepted as one of my peers that's been there, done that before. Um, I think it's a, a respect level. I mean, they're they're like, man, this so dude right here, he rodeoed <laughs> a bunch. Now he's you know singer songwriter. And it just kind of all fell into part. But we had such a great time. I mean, Will, myself. I mean, there there's a bunch of guys up there. Um, so many guys uh, Midnight Road River Choir. Some of the guys were there for that for the Huey party and. Um, I went to one of the Huey parties. I went to see Turnpike. 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 I've never seen them live yep. before. It was so good. Oh, they're they're great guys. Uh, Hank Early plays steel form. Good friend of mine. Um, I mean, they're they're one of the hot guys yeah. right now. Hot I had never guys. heard of the brand Huey before I got there, but it was fine. <laughs> yeah. They they are. Like, right? What is all this stuff? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They're great guys, but um, <laughs> man, it was it was fun to catch up. Like I said. Um, Go out there and do a little bit of work. I mean, I, I wouldn't even call it work, man. These guys, they love us. They support mm-hmm. our brand. Um, and, and we did the same. We support it back. But I can't believe I like, I pinch myself every day yeah. that, that we get to do this for a living. And it's so much fun and so enjoyable. We have one of the coolest jobs in the world. Now, granted, there is times where it gets down to brass tacks and business, but for the most part, I get to travel around the country in a bus and with some of my best friends. And, um, shoot, go play good honky tonk music. Yeah. Get to see, you know, get to see pretty <laughs> girls like this. You know, get interviewed. Got got somebody with a camera got in my camera. face. We're getting but real professional. My wife's like, you go out there and you eat that up, sweetie. You make that thing good. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh man! Just in case you see this, I'm doing my best, though. So, Does she come on the road with you ever? She, she... tries um, okay. some of the bigger stuff. Um, granted, she would have loved to fly to Nashville. We're having some uh, health problems with our father-in-law, her daddy, and uh, you know, Lord willing, he's he's gonna be all right. But um, she'll she'll come out to the bigger shows. Yeah. Um, she don't like riding on the bus. It, it, hey, here's the deal. 45 foot at 70 miles an hour ain't glamorous. It's, it's, it ain't yeah, glamorous. People uh, think it is. It, it's nice. It's it's pretty to go to, but she says, I feel like I'm riding in the back of something that I have no control over. But um, she handles it very well. I mean, she's very, um, she understands the business. Yeah. She and I have been in it for a long time. And uh she supported me through this for 15 years, you know. Uh, That's great. Yeah. Two kids, and I mean, if somebody ever tells you the music industry is easy to do, it's not. It's not. Uh, we've we've lived on a pot of beans for a week. We know how to do that. So um, she's been there since the beginning. She handles all my PR stuff. Uh, 
heck, man. I mean, she's she is the real housewife of Texas music. Yeah. You know, um, you got gals like her. You got Aaron Watson's wife Kim, which sweetheart of a gal. Um, the real chicks. Yeah. The the real women that are behind these guys that go out and do this every week. It takes such a it takes strong, a lot, woman, yeah. strong woman. Um, and they're there. They're our backbones. Mm -hmm. You know, even. Even when we are gone two weeks at a time, you know, or a month at a time, um, she makes uh, she makes leaving worth being gone. Yeah. So Aww. that's uh, for sure that. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, we're gonna switch it up. Sorry, we didn't we didn't mean to get that. Uh, didn't mean to get that far into it. So my wife's at home going, "Oh my God, I love you." Yes, I do. I love you, you shithead, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last time you were, we were here, um, we did offer our confessions. Oh. But you didn't know what to confess. I didn't. <laughs> do you I have, still don't. Do you, I mean, what do I do? I mean. Is there something weird? Is there a weird tendency? <laughs> and I probably told you that I'd come up with like, one before we you, did this again. You know Brindley Addington? Yes. He's been on the podcast. He confessed that for the last like 10 years of his life, he's only ever bought him green toothbrushes. He will not use a toothbrush if it's not green. Like, that's like something like weird. But wow, it wasn't dude, like that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> that, that just tells me why he's a great songwriter. He'll only buy green ones. And, like, hey, y'all say hi to Uncle Steve. There's Steve. Hey. Hey. That's my favorite bass player in the world right there. <laughs> um, man, weird. Uh, so <laughs> we, this is gonna be good. I know it. We've been we've been getting into like putting ACs on on the buses. We've got in house in ACs, and I know a lot of people ain't gonna get this, but we're thinking about going to roof airs. Well, that means you have to cut holes in the roof of the bus. Okay. <laughs> I'm weird when it comes to that. I am OCD a little bit. Uh, but to cut holes in something, I mean, it's it's a thing. It's like I, I can't watch it happen. Uh, like anything, like um, if, we're, if we're cutting a, a, a piece of wood or something to go on this special thing, I... I can't do it. I don't know how machinists do it. I don't know how cabinet makers do it because I'm like measure six times and cut four. Um, but to put a hole in anything, to cut something, it, it, I'm weird you like just, that. You just don't like that. Me and my buddy, we had to put a, and some of my bass fishing buddies, y'all will get this if you hear this. We had to put a foot controller for a trolling motor on the boat okay. instead of it being they wanted it recessed instead of on the deck. So we had to cut a hole in the fiberglass. When you cut that hole, it there's nothing there. You can't put it back together. Oh my God. <laughs> it stressed you out? I almost <laughs> broke out in hives trying to do it. So yeah, I mean, I'm a little weird when it comes to cutting things and putting things together. If it's metal on metal, I can weld it. I'm great, but wood, Fiberglass, nope, don't do it. So one of my 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 front house guy, my production manager, he's a great case builder. Tower Leaf, he, he builds some great road cases. I can't see him work. I can't watch it. So yeah, weird, okay, weird that, that, thing. That is a little strange. Yeah. So Josh Ward will probably never do carpentry. I'll never do fiberglass work. I'll never. Um, yeah. Are I don't. Sorry, if I got table. way, way out there those, with that so one, I mean, uh, Yeah, we can weld. We put we put the world back together with a welding machine. Wood? Nope. There ain't enough glue in the world <laughs> to hold that stuff together. Sorry, I got I got a little off, didn't I? All good. Um, what can we expect from you coming up this year? After like the singles or any other big well, exciting? Um, Plans? Definitely singles. We're, we're writing for the record now. Okay. Um, writing for it, picking up songs. I mean, ha I, and I told you on the first one, I don't have to write. Right. It, a great song deserves to be song. heard. Um, so, with that being said, I mean, I'm going to handpick them just like I always do. I'm going to make the record that I want to make. Um, 
that might be a little little time consuming. Yeah. Um, every 18 months is when the golden hour to put one out. But uh, I'm not going to give you anything that I don't believe in. Yeah. So if that co- cost me a little time to make it, then I will. Yeah. So, um, but it is in the works. Brand new record is one of those things that after the first, you know, the last record, I said first record, the last record, I was just completely mind blown. Just mm-hmm. didn't want to write, didn't want to record, just, I was tired. We you know, you, exhausted you from came out of that project hour. going, oh, I put my life into it, or I put, I put this much of my being into it. And now I've got the writing bug again. Like the wheels are turning. We're we're going into writing mode. Um, teaming up with some great guys, Bryce Long, uh, Terry McBride, um, which we did on the last one. We had number ones with them. Uh, All about loving. That was uh, Bryce Long, Terry McBride, Chris Stapleton. <laughs> I didn't never think that I could say. I don't even think Chris knows my name still to this day. But God love him. Thank you for writing such a great song. Um, had a number one with that. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that comes mm-hmm. with writing the songs, the songwriters, the band. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't just leave it alone. What he say? Don't touch it. Don't think about touching it. Don't think about thinking about touching it. He said, don't touch it. You remember what movie that was off of, right? I Come don't, on, I now. don't. Come Lexi, on, the Johnny know. Cash movie. She's going to have to go home and watch I'll go home and watch the Johnny Cash Walk movie. Walk the line. Walk I've the never line. Seen Jerry it. Lee Lewis. He said, don't <laughs> think about touching it. Don't think about thinking about touching it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. So, with that being said, things have been working, so just kind of keeping it going. It, if rolling, it's working, rolling with the momentum. Rolling. <laughs> if it starts falling, we'll start working. <laughs> but right now, we're doing very, very good. Um, hell, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. You know, getting to getting to go out, and play my songs, um, have good guys like Jake Worthington on the road with me doing it. Um, Randall King. Another great guy. I mean, uh, he's blown. I feel like he's starting to get a lot of momentum behind Randall, him. Randall, Randall's, Randall's special to me, man. He always has been. Heck of a songwriter, just hell of a guy too. I mean, we all run in very small circles. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he and I, Cody Johnson. I mean, which Cody's, bless his heart, man. He's rocking it right now. And uh, heck, just to just to be surrounded by a great group of peers like mm-hmm. that. Um, kind of keeps you in line. It yeah. lets you know what your next move's going to be. Like, hey, they're going and doing it. You need to maybe step up a little bit. Pick yeah. that game up. But uh, I think for the most part, we're doing, doing all right. Doing all right. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for sitting down with us again. Where can everyone follow you? Did we cover everything yet? <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to cover? <laughs> So I had a few drinks before we did this because I wanted her to have a good one, all right? Now, um, yeah, she can go to joshwardmusic.com. Um, follow us on Facebook, Twitter. What's um, your favorite social media platform? My favorite one is Instagram. Um, it, it lets me um, it lets me connect with the with, folks yeah. a little better. I mean, you can do the live deals. Um I mean, the Snapchat thing, I still ain't figured it out. I ain't even got an app on my phone. But um, I'm a simple guy, guys. I mean, I'm, I like to hunt, fish, rodeo, that's, and play music. I mean, I, I don't I don't get on the, the internet very much. I probably need to. But, uh, yeah, Instagram's one of those deals where somebody messages me, and I know it's, it, yeah. it's heartfelt, and I see it. I'll get right back to them. I mean, I, I'm a people person. Yeah. Um, so yeah, follow us there. Um, all the outlets to download music and call your local radio station too. I promise you, country music ain't dead. So perfect. All right, thank you. She's a pro. <laughs>